Hello, I'm Richmond, a final year student in the EJSR CPR. I'm particularly excited to be hosted on Pulse TV to speak to you on uh, how to calculate for your CGPA, your GPA, and even your final uh, grade point, that is the FGP, which most of you, it has become a very scary thing to you. Yes, it's worth it, you know how to do it. But before we zoom into that section to know how to calculate for it, let's look at a few terminologies which you encounter or you see in your academic records whenever you open your transcripts. So one of it is the CCT. But before we move there, um, I want to talk about, we mentioned credit hours a lot. So what do we mean by credit hours? So credit hours indicate the number of hours you attend a particular uh, lecture for a particular course and the, the tutorial session that as such. So usually we have some courses that are ranging from two credits. Some are sometimes one credit, which are usually practical based courses. We have uh, two credit courses, we have three credit courses and four credit courses and extremely six credit courses and two people in the professional field like education doing teaching practice they can have as huge as 15 credit courses or uh, a single course dubbed with 15 credits so that is it for the credits hours now looking at few of these concepts we have ccp or cct yes so cct refers to the cumulative credits taken so here we sum up all the credits hours for the various courses which you've taken within a semester then we have CCP. Here, the number of courses which you pass within the courses you took in a semester is all referred to as the CCP, cumulative credits passed. So we add up the credit hours for all the courses which you have passed. Then we have what we call the CGPA. So the CGPA indicates the cumulative grade point average. Cumulative grade point average. Then also we have the GP or the almighty one which is the GP called the grade point average. Then also we have the FGP or the final grade point average. Yes. So these are the various concepts which some of you may not even understand what it indicates. Now getting to know how to calculate your GP, which uh, final year students who are going out of school are very sensitive about. People who apply for scholarships are very uh, sensitive about. So the FGPA is not just calculated by, by on its own. For you to calculate your FGPA, you should know the CGPA for each of the four levels which you go through. So the first level, uh, the FGPA is calculated on the 1122 ratio basis. But uh, to know the CGPA for each of the levels, now that can be seen at the, uh, the CGPA that shows at your second semester of every level. So your CGPA is calculated by the total, uh, you see, each of the courses has grade point. So the sum total of it gives you the cumulative grade point. Now, this cumulative grade point is summed up for all the courses you take in a semester and divided by the total credits you have done. So, for instance, in a semester, when you have done five courses minimum, so these five courses will give you a total of, let's assume, all our three credit hours basis each. Then it will give you 15 credits. That is, the CCT is 15. Then the uh, cumulative grade point becomes a sum total of all the grades which you get and they are located point. So you have something like 60 for taking uh, 60 as a cumulative grade point when you have taken 15 credit hour courses. So for you to know your CGPA for the semester, then we divide the cumulative grade point, uh, grades which you have gotten over your total uh, CCT or the cumulative credit which you have taken. And that will give you so for instance getting all a's for five courses which you've done or let's say you did, you did five courses then you were fortunate and you got uh, four a's with one b plus so each a gives you a grade point of what 12 if the course that three credits are course so you have uh four times uh, four times uh, 12 giving you 48 so when you have your 48 then the b plus gives you a grade point of 10.5 so plus your 10.5 which gives you a total of um, 58.5. So you have a total of 58.5 over 60. So this 58.5 is then divided by the total credit, uh, credit hours which you have done, which is 15. Which when you do that, you realize you get a grade point for 3.95 or 3.9. Now this 3.9 indicates your CGPA for the semester. So we continue to ca calculate your CGPA throughout all the levels. We do the same for level 100, level 200. It accumulates the total courses or the credit hours which you do and the grade points which you get for them. So within your four year study, you will have allocated CGPA for each of the second semester. 
and that indicates your CGPA for each of the levels. And so when you have this, then we then move to how to calculate for your FGP or your final grade point average. So your final grade point average is estimated out of 4.0. Now this 4.0 is worse when we strike uh, average of each of the levels uh, CGPs. So it's calculated on a 1, 1, 2, 2 basis. So we have, uh, we express 1 out of 6 and multiply by the CGPA you are seeing in each of the levels, that in level 100 and 200. So level 100, let's assume you got 3.9 as your CGPA in level 100. And this 3.9 is then multiplied by 1 spread out of, out of 6, which then gives you a CGPA of, or a corresponding grid point of what? 0 0.65, 0 0.65 in such a case. Then you do the same thing for, so let's say when you go to level 200, you got a grade point or a CGP of 3.98 uh, or 3.88. So 3.88 multiplied by one out of six because we are still working with a 1122 ratio. So when you have this, then you still get 0 0.646 in three decimal places for the C, uh, allotted a grade point for level 200. Now moving to 300 and 400, that is where the weight lies the more. And so we advise that when you go see a 300 and 400, take it more serious. Because most of the time, first year, second year, the courses which you do are usually introductory courses. And so it rated on one, one basis. Now level 300, you start doing more of your main courses. So for instance, in the business school, usually those who do BSc administration, from third year, they tend to major in their courses. So you have someone doing a major. So he's now specializing in accounting. And in such a case, the great point button must possess or have, must have higher weights. And so you have uh, the, it's multiplied by two out of six. So in a case, let's say in your third year, you got a, a CGP of let's say 3.75. So you have this 3.75 multiplied by two out of six. And whenever you multiply by a higher denominator, Express over the, uh, a higher numerator expressed over the denominator, then it's going to give you a, a higher expectation. So you will do that and you get averagely 1.25, 1.25. Then you do the same thing for level 400. Now, when you finish, all you do is that for you to know your FGPA, you add up all the corresponding figures you got in each of the levels CGPs or each of the levels accumulations. So accumulation of all these is supposed to give you uh, or be estimated out of 4.0. So this is how we accumulate for your FGP. But one important thing one people or people look at is they do free electives. When does free elective become useful? Free elective becomes useful when uh, all the courses you do in the school are categorized into basis. We have what we call the investors repair courses, which usually we call it the UGLCs, and the other repair courses, which we have the most immediate one is the HEC, the Humanities and Education Repair courses taken by those in the Humanities and the, uh, Education field basis. Then also we have uh, the main courses. The main courses are categorized into uh, core courses and elective courses. Now the elective uh, core courses which you take are all expected of you to pass, and so you have to attain a minimum of A to grade D. From those core courses which you take and so uh, then for the elective so what we do is that for the main course we accumulate its total so each of the colleges we have four main colleges at the University of Ghana as we speak College of Education through to College of Health Sciences now when you come to College of Education and College of Humanities which most of it is populated now this college has uh, a, a minimum of 120 grade point or 120 credit hours for you to be due for graduation which means we calculate a total of your uh, required courses which you do which usually sums up to uh, 18 credits then we look out for your core courses the total grade points like the total credit hours that you give us when we get that we add it to your required courses uh, credit hours then we then look out for out of the numerous electives which you have done how many of the credit hours can we get to add up to what you have existing to make you uh, reach the minimum requirement of 120 for it to be due for graduation. So when we do this, that is when the advantage or the benefit of taking a free elective comes in. So here, it's not just about taking a free elective, but it's about getting a good grade. So we go and sample out the elective courses that you have good grades for and add up to your main courses or your uh, core courses and the required courses. Then in all, it sums up to give you a good CGPA, which will in the end result in a good GPA. So for you to be able to calculate your FGPA effectively, 
then you should know the accurate CGPA for each of the levels. So we have level 100 through to level 400. Now for your level 100, usually it's automatically calculated for you because it's as if you've not done any match. So the first and the second semester, we take it average and uh, get you it allotted CGPA. But for you to download your CGPA for level 200, you have to do that calculation yourself. So in such a case, you just calculate the total credit hours which you have done, then divide it by the corresponding grade point when you sum it up, so that you can get the CGPA for each of the levels. So by getting the CGPA for each of the levels, it becomes easier to accumulate for your total or your final grade point, which is the C uh, FGPA where that is where you apply the 1122 ratio whereby you take the cgp you got in level 100 then you multiply it by one out of six you get its corresponding figure okay? then you take the cgp you got for level 200 you multiply it by one out of six then you keep its corresponding figure you come to level 300 you get a cgp you get for level 300 you multiply by two out of six then you keep its corresponding figure you take level three four hundred you get that cgp you got for level 400 then you multiply by 2 over 6 then you get eight corresponding figures so once you get all these corresponding figures then you sum up all to give you your fgp and it's easy as calculated as such you know one thing why you should watch this channel is that uh we invest your is overpopulated we have seventy-five thousand plus students out of this the vice chancellor or the director of academic affairs my Lydia currently cannot handle our students to have sessions to explain this to you and so uh, it's a good thing to have Paul's uh, TV come up with such sessions for you to understand be abreast with the system so that you know uh, your way or out on campus and so all you need is your calculator watch Paul's TV to know how to calculate your CGP, your FGP and everything so that you keep updated and abreast with the investment system hope to see you watch like and share this channel